Well, hello everyone, and thank you for this opportunity to talk to the, the viewers of Hastings Community Television. Mr. Baker and I will introduce ourselves and then we'll also uh, give you some context to our conversation. I'm Mark Zuzik, I'm the middle school principal for Hastings Middle School. And I'm Paul Baker, I'm the principal at Pinecrest Elementary. Great. And we're here today to talk about a new initiative that we'll be starting at, at the public schools and actually throughout all of the schools within the district, including the private schools, like the, the Harbor uh, School and St. John's and also St. Elizabeth Van Seton. We'll be beginning to follow a new protocol for crisis situations that, in, that involve um, either an active shooter or a, a dangerous person entering the building. In the past, what we've done is a traditional lockdown. And, and what a traditional lockdown means is that all of the kids shelter in the classroom with their teacher and uh, turn off the lights, they're in a dark space, they are quiet, and they shelter there. There's new research that has indicated that that is not uh, the, the best way to go. And so we've looked into some other options and we'll be using a new protocol uh, and we'll be transitioning to that protocol throughout the school year this year. The purpose of today's program is to explain that to the community and make sure that, uh, that parents and citizens are aware of what's going on in, in the schools. And Mark, I'm really um, thankful that we're able to dedicate a whole day. Yeah. On, on December 22nd, we'll be inviting the entire staff of the Hastings Public Schools uh, which would include not only teachers and administrators, but also custodians, cooks, uh, secretaries, all support staff, uh, because it is so important that uh, this training, uh, because we want people to really feel empowered and understand that uh, we have decisions that can be made in situations like this. So I, I know that actually choosing the date and even developing the context or the, the framework for the training was a lot of decisions mm, uh, related to it. And what we wanted to do was pick a day that was as soon as possible because uh, five administrators and our school resource officer went to training in August. It happened to be at a, at a school in the Twin Cities. And when we went to that training, we were all just so deeply compelled by it. We wanted to have training as soon as possible and soon as possible at a quality level. And so we right. looked at the school calendar and the date for December 22nd was selected because we know that, that by that time we can be ready for that training. And it also gives some think time for our staff over the holiday break when they, when they go home. Right. Another component of course to it is by giving the students the day off on Thursday, December 22nd, what it does for the families of our students is it does extend the time that they'll be home over the holiday break. I know that for some families that's going to be an inconvenience because they have to find daycare, right. but for many families it might be of benefit because it gets them mm -hmm. more travel time. So we, yeah. we want to say thank you though. Yeah. Thank you to all of our families to helping us make this possible. Absolutely. So Hastings Public Schools are safe and, and we have a lot of things in place that, that keep us safe. If I think about for instance, just the things that we've done to, if you will, harden our schools. We've got a, a, a security guard that works uh, a, as a school resource officer. We have from the Hastings Police Department, Officer David Bowers, a school resource officer. He gives us a lot of advice. He's actually on campus nearly every day, both at the middle school, at the high school, at the elementary schools as needed. We've got managed uh, entrances. Right. We've added some technology where people that are entering the schools have probably been uh, familiar with where we're scanning driver's licenses as well. Uh, just really being mindful of safety because it's a priority. You know, it's important to us that our students are safe and we know when kids are safe and everyone feels safe, uh, learning is that much more uh, readily accessible. Right. And there's a lot of things that aren't new, frankly. I mean, the administrators throughout the district all carry a radio so that they can be in touch with administrators in different buildings. They can also be in touch with their office, with any uh, programs that might need special attention in the building. The, there's a lot of staff that have radios so that we can have com two-way communication. We have video security. We've got our, our door systems lock, uh, w frankly, with the, the touch of a button. And we're able to, to make it so that only people with, a, with a, an appropriate badge can get in through certain doors at, at different times. And I, I, again, want to say that we're not starting from a deficit. We're starting from a solid place. But research shows that 
the likelihood of survivability and the likelihood of making sure that, that as a community we keep our kids safe is increased if we have multiple options and go beyond that traditional lockdown. And I think that's really what it, you know, resonated with all of us when we were at the training this summer. And when, as we kind of thought through um, kind of our current practices and realized, hey, what we have is good, but we can improve on it. And, and, and so as we thought through the ALICE model, we could see how it could be implemented here without changing our infrastructure you know, in, a, in a great way. And so why don't we talk a little bit about what ALICE is and, good. and get into the... In the, fact, I think that there's a slide to refer to at this time. And, right. and the acronym for ALICE is A stands for alert, L stands for lockdown, I stands for inform, C stands for counter, and E stands for evacuate. I think it's important to note that those are not sequential. We don't always, you know, it, the only one that probably is not sequential is alert. That, that seems to be the one that you would necessarily mm -hmm. start with. But after alert, things can go differently in different situations because each situation is different and even the context of each classroom or each area of a school right. is different. And so, Paul, can you talk about how that might evolve or how that, how there all of those situations are dynamic? Sure, and just thinking through that, um, Alice, with the acronym, it helps us recognize that we do have a lot of choices. There, there are decisions that are made by the adults. And so, um, as we think of that alert, that first action where we're recognizing that there's a situation here that we need to take action with, um, then we start to think, let's evaluate the situation and decide what's going to be best for the students that are with us at that time. Whereas we might just go right into a lockdown. Yeah. And as we think about a, the a lockdown that we currently have in place, the Alice lockdown is really a heightened lockdown or a, it's um, where we're really being more proactive. We're doing whatever we can to barricade the doors. Um, we're making sure that if that door would be breached, what will we do? Yeah, and always then standing ready for some of the other elements of, of Alice. For instance, if we're working with the kids in a room and there is an alert, maybe we just hear a loud commotion down the hallway and we call 911 and we call uh, the office to, to alert the rest of the building, then we're in alert and maybe the best situation right away the, or the, the best and right thing to do is to lock down because we're not quite sure what's going on. We might lock our door. Traditionally what's happened is we'd lock our door, all the kids would go into one area and, um, and there, there's some elements of that, that that will stay the same. However, as Paul indicated, barricading the door, making sure that we're doing everything we can to make sure that nobody gets through that door, and then always being at the ready to move mm -hmm. to some of those other ones, like, again, C for counter or E for evacuate. And the context of, of, a, of an emergency situation continues to change throughout. So let's see, that's A for alert, L for lockdown, and then I, I for inform. Inform, and that's yeah. really making sure that then uh, information is shared. You know, we're using our resources, our radios, our, our, our phones, whatever way we, we can communicate out what's happening, uh, not only to maybe the police, but also to uh, teachers or other adults in the rest of the building so that they have current information, they can make the decisions that are best. One, one of the guiding principles of the ALICE approach is that the people that are, that are able to make the best decision are the people closest to whatever their situation is. And keeping, the, keep everybody, keeping everybody abreast of what's currently going on is the, is, this, is the secret sauce to that. Because what happens is throughout an, an event, what has traditionally happened is the administrators, uh, as, long, as well as the rest of the building, are locked down and we're not really uh, responding, we're not, we're not really communicating with people. But now with, with a, an ALICE approach, inform means that throughout the entire thing, we're, we're making maybe, uh, using our phone, we're addressing through the public address system or the PA in the building, we're telling everybody where maybe the bad guy is. At the same time, we're talking to 911 uh, dispatchers and informing them so that they can inform the officers that are responding. And another critical component of inform is that we need to make sure that everybody that's in our buildings, whether they are you know, parents on a volunteer basis mm -hmm. or they are a guest teacher right. for a day, Everybody uses the same language for 
for what's going on in the incident, and everybody uses the same language in referring to parts of the building. And that's why you know we'd really avoid code words or right? using maybe even room numbers, but using language that would be uh, very understandable. We might say in an elementary school, the second grade hallway, or you know, at the middle school, you might use other names. Sure, like for instance, it would. I think everybody would understand if I said on the PA system. There is a the the bad guy is now located down by the auditorium, mm -hmm. and people would would make decisions based on how proximal they were or how distant they were from the auditorium, and and they have options again. C, in Alice means counter, and counter means different things at different levels, and of course barricade means different things at different levels, and and evacuate means different things at different levels, but. With counter, what it really means is doing everything we can to take control of the situation. For instance, if it's a group of adults, like for instance, people working in the district office and they are countering, their approach might frankly be quite physical. Yeah. They might try to take control of the situation by, oh my goodness, like swarming the person, mm -hmm. that, the bad guy that's coming through the door, right. if, if indeed they think that their life is in danger. Mm -hmm. That obviously looks different in a second grade class. And so our training, with, with kiddos is very differentiated by age group. Can you talk about that as an elementary yeah, principal? Absolutely, and, and as we think about a lockdown situation in an elementary school, uh, the adults are still going to be making the decisions. And you know, for kids, it's gonna look a lot like it does now, except you know, we're not going to have kids all together in one area. And so the adults are going to be really uh, dictating what's happening, evaluating that situation. Uh, we, there might be a, a plan what would happen if this, somebody would come through the door? Well, I'm gonna use anything in this classroom that I can to try to deter that. Right. Um, but we're not going to be putting kids in, in a situation where they're going to have to make decisions, where we're, we're not asking them to swarm an intruder or something along that line in a second grade class. But you know, we might have them making a lot of noise. Right. Uh, and people, that seems a little counter to what we would currently say. Right. But you know, if what we're trying to do is take back the situation, take back control, and when we can get somebody off that of their kind of their mental um, plan, that can really then turn to our advantage. We've been talking with other area schools that have gone and uh, gone forward with a multi-options approach, and in a nearby school district, Farmington, the language set that they used with their teachers and with their kiddos when they were training kids is they talked about sheep shepherd and wolf and that that the sh that the sheep are the students at mm -hmm. the I, I, actually i think that it's a it's a pretty uh, good analogy sure. and and similar to uh, to a school situation the teacher the adult in charge of the kids is the shepherd and the sheep really need to do what the shepherd does but instead of always locking down if you will mm -hmm. with the flock there's some other options like countering or evacuating and that would take us to the fifth element of Alice evacuating now before we depart from the building before a teacher leaves with his class and goes outside of the building there is a prearranged rally point so that when the the kiddos leave we know where we're going to find the kids and and the the teachers and that's critical for each of our sites of course that's a different spot and to pick those rally points, we've had to think about what are the traffic flow mm -hmm. around the area and what would that traffic flow look like if indeed there were a crisis situation and there was a lot of uh, officers responding to, to a crisis at school. Of course, that, that would, you know, and that really... That kind of reminded me of a, a real key component when we were in our training where they talked about, you know, especially at like the, the high school level, if we were to evacuate the building, we don't want people getting in their cars and start driving away. Oh yeah, that's because, right. Because yep. you know that really can make it difficult for any emergency responders to get to the building, and, and so that's why we we're picking these rally points, uh, and we we'd expect people to be traveling there on foot. You know, Paul, that brings up a great example of how, after training the staff, we'll be training the kids, and. And it's really critical that our message to the kids is adapted as well Absolutely. for every age group. Mm -hmm. and, and if you're talking to a 17-year-old uh, junior in high school that has their license and has their car sitting outside, it, we need to make sure that they understand right. why it's critical that they don't get in their car. And that's a piece of training mm -hmm. that, of course, we wouldn't be providing at the middle school right. or the high school. Right. We would be telling our staff, hey, regardless of what your job is, don't depart from 
the campus mm -hmm. un until we know that, you know, know where you are and, and what your situation is. Right. And, and stay with the flock, if you will. Yes. And, you know, and it just kind of highlights that idea of we're, we're giving people options. We're empowering them to make decisions. And this isn't just a school situation. You know, these kinds of ideas are relevant if you were in a public setting and, and something would happen there as well. And, and that's really the power, you know, sitting in our training, being alongside business owners, there right. was, you know, somebody from the Goodwill. A lot of different places are thinking about this model and re recognizing that, hey, this is a way for us to regain control of a situation that we hope we never are in. But if we are, let's have a plan. And local law enforcement, state and, and federal mm -hmm. law enforcement agencies, such as the Homeland Security, the FBI, the, the Department of Education, the Hastings Police Department, Dakota County Sheriff's Department are recommending a multi-options approach for that exact same reason. Yep. When we're working with kids, we want to make sure that, of course, we're teaching them lifelong skills and keeping mm -hmm. yourself safe is a lifetime skill. So whether you're at the workplace as a senior in high school, maybe, oh my goodness, like working at Chipotle and something right. bad happens, right. how do you keep yourself safe? Mm -hmm. Well, all of the five elements of ALICE that apply when we're working with kids are elements that would extend well beyond the classroom. That, and thank you, mm -hmm. kids leaving school, going to college, uh, going to the workplace in the future. They, right. This is very good training. It is. Yeah. Um, so what are some of the other important attributes, do you think, of, of empower that, that sense of decision-making and empowerment? I know myself going through the training, mm -hmm. you know, it, it really reduces fear because right. you have options. And um, I'll just comment that that sitting in a classroom and and just waiting for something bad to happen can be a fear-inducing right. uh, situation. So having multiple options really does reduce the fear. It also, as you know, it 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 also increases survive survivability. It is sad that there's been so many horrifically tragic events throughout the nation and frankly internationally as right. well. Yeah. But when law enforcement officers have looked at that data, there are clear trends that when a multi-options approach has been used, the survivability rate goes up. And that's really at the base of what we're trying to do. It's that empowerment it and is. making sure that, that the kids um, and the adults have, have options. And I think it's really important, and I know you've hit on it a couple times today, but just that it looks different in different places. Yeah. You know, that um, it's going to look different at the high school than at the middle school and at the elementary uh, in such a way that even when we're talking about countering, the, the conversation isn't focused around kids at all until right. we really get into that, that upper High school, rate. probably. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so um, I think that's important for everyone to just recognize. Yeah, I, th I think so. The other thing that I would say is that there is a continuum of control of that decision that, that, that relates to the age of the kiddos. And so right. younger kids, the adults stay in control of the decisions. Mm -hmm. As kids get older and move into middle school, through middle school, into high school, right. it is with intention that we're moving some of that decision making to the, the students appropriately because, heck, they're leaving here right. at, you know, at the end of 12th grade. And so we want to make sure that mm -hmm. they're ready for, for really any situation. But. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Yeah. And you know, even if you think about a dynamic situation, you might be out on the playground where we want that adult to make the decision, take the kids, get them to a safe place. Yep. You, know, you don't need to come back to the building if we know that that's where the, where the, bad, guy is, the, sure. the bad guy is. Sure. And so you know, by thinking through some of these situations, by going back to our sites after the training yeah. and really being able to look. I know, you know we've talked about it a couple of times. After the training, we'll go to different places and recognize different things that could be used if we find ourselves in that kind of situation. And so having teachers, having staff members go back, look at their surroundings and understand, here's how, what I would do, uh, I think is really empowering too. And that work will be done with teams. Mm -hmm. It'll be done right. with teams of people that, that work in the same maybe area or pod or hallway in and a partnering building. partnering with our police department yeah, too. Yeah, right. So. And, and so we'll, we'll, get, we'll get consultation on how mm -hmm. can we help to barricade this door? What are some right. of the options? We'll go from room to room, look at, at different rooms and, and the people that occupy those rooms on a typical school day, 
would be thinking about it. Our cooks, for instance, would be thinking about a lockdown or barricading mm -hmm. the, the kitchen area. How can they keep themselves safe? How can the people in, in an office keep themselves right. safe if they're in a tumultuous situation? So a, as we close, just a couple of things. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that, that viewers might want more information on this, but before we even make comments about that, I, I just really want to say that, that I, on behalf of the, the district administration, I want to thank the, the citizens of Hastings and the parents of, of, our, of the children that we serve for entrusting their kids to us, not only to teach, but to keep them safe. And I am 100% confident that moving to the ALICE methodologies, the elements of, of ALICE, will, will improve our capacity to keep kids safe. I also recognize and appreciate that this may be an inconvenience for some families on December 22nd, and I appreciate the flexibility uh, for allowing us to begin the kids' holiday break a day early. But Paul, where could they go if they had some questions sure. or wanted some information? Well, you know, we are fortunate. All of the building principals and the system principals yeah. at the middle school will all have been trained in the ALICE model. And so I, I think that would be a place that they could start if they wanted to have a conversation or learn more about it. Um, information will be um, being posted on our website as well. Yeah. And just to kind of inform and, and continue to educate people on our this model. Yep, and, and then as we're teaching kids, I'm sure that there will be uh, pieces that we'll be sending home again that are age appropriate to the site that right. the children are at. So. Absolutely. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>